I'm going to make some sticky buns, or perhaps you call them caramel pecan rolls. But whatever you call them, they are delicious. We're going to start off with one third cup of milk, which I warmed in the microwave, just until it's about 100 degrees, so just above body temperature. You don't want it much more than that because you'll kill your yeast. And then I'm going to add to it two and a half teaspoons of yeast. And I buy my yeast in bulk, as you can see, and a half. And I store it in a jar in the refrigerator. It's because I bake a lot. And I'm going to mix it up. And now what I have to do is I have to let this sit for about 10 minutes at room temperature so that it has a chance to grow a little bit. And then we'll come back and we'll proceed with the recipe. I have three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one third cup of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and five whole large eggs. And I'm going to just put these things into my mixer bowl, the dry ingredients first. Give them a little bit of a whisk to blend them. Now I'm going to add the five eggs and the proofed yeast. all that yeast in there. Make it nice and big. And now on the mixer. And we'll start this off on slow so that I'm not covered in flour. And just until it gets slightly incorporated. We've got a timer here because what we're going to do once this is incorporated is I'm going to turn the speed up until medium and I'm going to let it sit there for 10 minutes. So, be back in 10. I'm going to shut that off for just a moment. If you're familiar with brioche, if you haven't made it, that's exactly what I'm doing here is I'm making a brioche type dough. So that's going to be the base for my sticky buns. Now we're going to get to the fun part. I have two sticks of butter. They're soft, but they're still cool. I let them come to room temperature just so I get them soft. And then I put them in the refrigerator for a little while to get a little bit of a chill on them. If it's too soft, this will get really gloppy. So you got to kind of find that balance. It's not that difficult. You can see it's soft, but it's still got a little coolness to it. I'm going to now turn the machine on and I'm going to add all of this butter in small pieces. And then it's really going to look like a mess, but it'll come together. You just have to keep mixing it for five minutes after all the butter gets put in. So let's get going. If you're making this at home, you may look at this in the mixer right now and say, that is never going to get mixed in there, but it is, trust me. You may have to stop two or three times during the course of mixing this just to scrape down the sides and get all of that dough off of the paddle because it tends to stick there. So that's what I'm going to do now because see I've got a big clump of dough here and a lot of butter sitting at the bottom. So I'm just going to scrape this down and I'm using a, a butter knife because it really works well. It's a tough dough, but boy, is it good when it gets all incorporated. There. Now I'll take my spatula here and just get the butter down there. And again, I'm going to put this on the mixer. I might scrape it down one or two more times, but it's going to go for five minutes. It's been five minutes. Time to take it off the mixer. And as you can see, all the butter got incorporated. There's no big glumps sitting on the side of the bowl. And it's, you can see how much smoother it is. It's soft, it's elastic. 
It's got a lot of life in it. Okay. Now, we're going to take it and we're going to put it into another bowl. To scrape it out. Now, when you're making this recipe, or you're using this dough for anything else, because you can make a lot of things with this dough. And you need to plan ahead because this dough right now, I'm going to cover it in plastic wrap and then it's going to sit at room temperature for two hours, give it a little boost, it's gonna grow. Then I'm gonna gently, not punch it, I'm gently gonna pat it down, might have to put some flour on my hands to pat it down. Then I'm gonna cover it again and it's going to go in through the refrigerator for a minimum of 12 hours up to, I think two days you can keep it in the refrigerator, but I usually use it the next day. So that's why I mean you need to plan ahead. So if you're going to make your sticky buns for a Saturday breakfast or lunch or brunch or whatever, you, meet, you make the dough on Friday. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to cover it. I'm gonna let it sit for two hours and then I'm gonna come back later on. I'm gonna show you how to start putting the buns together. Here's what our dough looks like after two hours at room temperature. I'm going to uncover it. And I'm going to gently press the dough down, letting out a lot of the gas out of the dough. Now I'm going to recover it nice and tightly. And then it will go into the refrigerator for a minimum of 12 hours or overnight. Now I'm going to make the caramel topping that melts down the top of the sticky buns. In this pot, I melted one and one half sticks of butter with one and one half cups of brown sugar. And you'll see, when you do this, you'll notice that the butter doesn't really get incorporated in with the brown sugar. Don't worry about it. That's perfectly fine. To this, I'm going to add one third cup of corn syrup. One third cup of heavy cream. I told you at the beginning, this is not a diet recipe. Third of a cup of water. And one eighth teaspoon of kosher salt. And just mix that up carefully because again, I don't want to be wearing this. It'll take a minute or two. Now, traditionally, most people make sticky buns in what is known as a sticky bun pan. And I have one of those right here. I know so because when I bought it, it said sticky bun pan. And this is a good quality one and people will grease these and put their buns in, they're all touching together, but I want to do them differently today. I am going to use my muffin pans, my large muffin pans. And I have uh, buttered them lightly. And let me just get this mixed up. All right, it's at a point where I can now start using it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to divide it as evenly as I can into the bottoms of each one of these cavities in my two pans. There's one. I'm only going to use half of my brioche dough to make these and I'm going to make something else with the other half. So this would have been enough for 12 more. So if you want to do it the way I'm doing it today by making something else, then just have that recipe and make it instead of one and one half cups, three quarter cups. Now I'm going to take some whole pecans and put them in the bottom. I'm putting in oh four in each cavity trying to make them look as pretty as possible. Top side up. Although when you turn them over, they're probably gonna slide off anyway. So what you might have to do at that point is just get a little spoon and kind of coax them back up to the top because the topping will set after a while.
If you didn't want to use whole pecans here, you could certainly just put in a, you know, a dollop of uh, chopped pecans. But it's really gotta be pecans. It can't be like walnuts or anything like that. It's, this is a sticky bun. Okay, our pans are ready. I'm going to go get my dough and we're gonna start rolling. Here's the dough that's been sitting in the refrigerator overnight. It's harder than it would have been had you left it at room temperature. That's the way slow rise works. It doesn't quite get as puffy or soft. It stays pretty hard, but it does make it easier to roll. And I'm gonna remove this, I'm put it off to the side because I'm only going to use half of it right now. Okay, that's good enough for the moment. I'm gonna take half of it. I'm gonna lightly flour this board. Here's half of my dough, still very cold. Now I'm gonna roll it out. It's a very nice dough. It's, it feels good to roll, it's nice and smooth. inches. Now I want to try to square it off. This is the hardest part is trying to even off things and make them rectangular. I think anyway. There we go. Now in a bowl, I have a half a cup of white sugar, half a cup of brown sugar, and about a half, uh, about a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I just mixed it all together. And just put that all over this. It'll help it to stick a little better. And then I have a half a cup of chopped pecans. Now you don't have to do these if you don't want to here. I had them, so I thought, why not? You can just leave it plain. Get those runaways over there. Okay. Again, push them down into the dough. Now, roll it up. You're not gonna just roll it up, you're just rolling it up. Doesn't need to be tight, tight, tight. Trim up the ends. Giving it a good little push so I can make sure all that Stuffing on the inside sticks well. Cut it in half. Mm. I'm going to start putting these in. And once I put them in, I kind of push them down a little bit. Gets them started to spread. And it's actually sitting in that soupy goodness on the bottom. Mm. 
Mm, that one's kind of skimpy. I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to be probably one short. I'd rather be one short than have a skimpy looking bun. All right, I'm going to cover up these pecan rolls and I'm going to let them sit at room temperature for an hour to an hour and a half until they double and then we'll start baking them. Now, what about this other half of the dough? Well, you could make cinnamon buns instead of sticky buns. You wouldn't put the goo on the bottom. You would just do the same thing with the cinnamon sugar without the pecans, roll it up and put them into either this type of a pan or another uh, like that other pan that I had before and you can just when they're done glaze them with a confection of sugar and milk frosting and that would just be a cinnamon bun as opposed to a sticky bun. What else can you do with this dough? Well you could make a cinnamon bread, streusel bread, roll it up, put the whole thing into a pan, bake it. You can make some of the best hamburger rolls. You could make some great little pizzas out of this. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with um, leftover brioche dough. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm sure I'll think of something. Our sticky buns have been sitting at room temperature for about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit longer, and they're ready to go into the oven. My oven is on at 350 degrees, and these are going in anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes. You're just going to have to check them and see when they're done. You'll, you'll be able to see they'll be nice and golden brown on top. If, for instance, the centers start popping up and you're getting like a cone shape instead of a round, you can just take another cookie sheet and just put it right over this pan in the oven for a few minutes and it'll push the centers down. So into the oven, 350 degrees. Here are our sticky buns hot out of the oven and I do mean hot. They are bubbling. so quickly because otherwise the caramel will make them stick. Let's hope they all come out. Here they come. Goes the first ones. Come on, gravity. There we go. And like I said, if you have to, you can use an extra little knife there to poke on those pecans. Then even fall off. Pick them up because they're real good stuff. Now don't those look yummy? Mmm. And remember that other half of the dough that I said you can make a lot of different things from? Well, I did while I was waiting for these to bake. I took the other half, I rolled them out, I filled them with cinnamon sugar, cut them just like I cut those. I put them in these little bake cups, but you can bake them freestyle on a pan. And this one, these are still kind of warm, so I just frosted one of them. And when they cool down a little bit, I'll frost the rest of them. So now we have pecan sticky buns and regular cinnamon buns, all from one dough, and you got quite a bit of dessert here. I hope you enjoy them.